Keep you, madam. Yes, madam, I'll inquire. Who's Peter anyway? Be silly, we're married. Number 20 wants some bicarbonate of soda. And hurry up. It's urgent. You're married? And your hubby lets you work all night? And pays the rent? Yes, but what does he do? Goes to sleep. What sort of a man did you marry? It is, but that's the way it is. And if it is or if it isn't, there it is, and it's up to you. I ask you, did you ever? I never. Good morning, Pat. Morning, Peggy. Morning, Peggy. Good morning, Pat. At last. Lou, you're five minutes late. Late? I ain't never. You are late. Well, if I am, it's this way. Last night when I went off duty, I missed my gentleman's Lovely. Lovely. Cooled it with my own breath. Ugh. Hi, just what the doctor ordered. Here. Gee. Here, that's mine. Blimey, what a sauce. <laughs> well, as I was saying, last night when I went off duty, I meets my gentleman friend. And when I meet my gentleman friend, he says to me, listen, Lou, what you say is, is. If you want to go your own way, he says, you can go your own way, he says. But he says, it'd be a bit of a change if for a change went my way, he says. So I said, if he felt that way, we'd go his way. And of course, if we'd gone my way, we wouldn't have been out half the night trying to find the way home. Oh, I'm very surprised you ever found your way home at all. Where's your calling list, Lou? 82 at 7.30, 40 at 8. 23 and 70 at 8.30. Hello. Oh, yes, Lady Bagshot wants a uniform cleaned. She's a major in the Duchess of Mayfair's Lady Bantams or something. Answer that or it'll blow up. Oh, I've been trying to get you for the last five minutes. I'm very sorry, sir. I've only just come on duty. I asked the night operator to call me a six sharp. Get her at once, please. Just a moment, sir. Pat! I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid she's gone. Will you kindly tell the manager when he comes on duty, I want to speak to him. Very good, sir. Pat's for the bread line. Fed up with you being out all night. I wish you weren't out all day. What do you want me to do? Check up my job and keep house? Certainly not keep house. Any money? No. I mean, you can understand bachelors. I'm much too tired to understand anything at the moment. A married bachelor doesn't make sense. Besides, it's not natural. Darling. Well, you and me never. Oh, you and me. We have Sundays. That's exactly my point. 
One evening a week together. It's getting me down. Honestly, I'm fading away. Yeah, Pat, get me some more toothpaste, will you? You know what they call me down at the job? Night starvation. What do you think about that? Pat! You listening? I'm going to bed right away. Oh, Peter, put me down. The bacon's catching. Never mind. What's your breakfast? I don't want any. I'm on a diet. Come on. You'll do yourself in with this switchboard stuff. Not worth it. Anyway, can't we stop saving up for a bit? Oh, don't let's start all that again. Suppose you got the sack. I'll get another job. Perhaps you'd like to get another wife. No, thanks. Have you done your gargle? I don't want a gargle. I love you, Pat. I love you too, Pete. Well, we ought to do something about it. Oh, I wish I could get a day job. So do I. We'll be dead before we get any fun out of life. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. You go to sleep. Good night, good night, darling. Just stop him. I was in the train. In the train? What train? Well, I was. Yeah, I was in one of these houses along here. Come along there. I'll show you. Never mind. I'll show you. You come along with me. Let's go back of this one. Yeah. Sure, this was the one. Yeah, positive. Must be the next one. You certain you saw what you alleged? Mm -hmm. Don't come in! Ah! Shit, ah! What's going on in there? Must be the next landing. Here we 
wish something? What's he doing here? Are you all right? What? Well, you see, I was passing in the train. I saw you struggling with... I saw him... Oh. I can explain. Perhaps I should explain. You wish to make a statement? Yes. I have to warn you that any statement you care to make will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. So? You saw it through the window, eh? Yes, I thought a crime was being committed. I thought it was murder. It was a crime, but it was no murder. Oh, come along, sir. We are artists in the music hall. I am illusionist. My name is Zoltini. My wife and I, we suffer so much. The public taste changes, you know. They don't want illusionists anymore. We are, we are, we are washed up, as you say. Now, we love each other so much. We live together so long. Now, we must die. We must die together. But I did not have the courage. Eh, hey, Vivian? No, eh? That was all. I'm sorry. Seems to have been a misunderstanding. You're quite correct to report what you saw. You don't have to do anything about it, do you? Do you telephone, Mr. Zoltini? Not here. Downstairs. Oh. You see, my friend? Two who have fallen by the wayside. Isn't there anything I can do? Unfortunately, you cannot change the public taste. At least you can take this just to carry on for the present. Oh, no, no, please, please, impossible. Pay it back when you get a job. No. Oh, shall I be proud that the sister so charmingly given? No. The only thing I ask is... Yes? Don't do that again. I think we can promise that, Viviane. Eh? Yes. Oh, I must be getting off. Uh, be late. Goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye. Perhaps I better keep this a sort of souvenir. Perhaps you better. Thanks. Well, I um, might look in sometime, see how things are. Yes, if you like. Thanks very much. All correct, no charge. Good. I'd like your name and address, sir. The inspector wishes to commend your public services. Oh, does he? Yeah. <laughs> well, did you ever see such a thing? These English. Uh, I must ask you, please, for my sake, not to kill yourself in such bad form. Haven't you any decency? <laughs> Why couldn't you tell them we were rehearsing? At such hour? The truth I could have explained. And were we ever once before in our entire career paid for rehearsals? Taking that boy's money, probably half his week's wages. You're disgusting. No woman can ever forgive a man for seeing a joke. So she always descends to abuse. I wasn't so disgusting when I arranged your first appearance. Oh, well, let me get dressed. The money will be paid back, don't worry. It wasn't so much the money, but to make a fool of the boy when he trusted you. Oh, now I see. Is there some other motive for this touching interest? Oh, what do you mean? A good-looking, fresh English boy. Just the proper sort for an English girl, huh? Louis! I've never minded hard work. I'm wandering over Europe with you without ever having a home. I've put up with your stupid temperament and conceit and your continual rows with management after management. But I can't stand this idiotic jealousy anymore. It's killing even the pity I have for you. And I warn you, when that goes, I shall go too. Now let me warn you, if to leave me so much as enters your mind, look out for yourself. I can put it 670,000 pounds. We 
rousing cheers from the taxpayers. But with demolition, it's one million two hundred. Who gets the odd two hundred? I can't say. To give you statistics... Oh, my paper loathes statistics. We want human stories. Well, take yourself, for instance. I'm averse to publicity. Well, you've lost the whole works, I suppose. Well, you might say that. I will. I, say, I didn't quite catch your name. Grant. Grant? Grant. Oh, Grant. And I suppose you're a pretty hot disciplinarian. Uh, make them work. What's going on here? Hello, Foreman's woke up. Duke could be for it proper now. Perhaps he's had an accident. What a good gory row, Smash. What's all this? What's going on here? Oh, nudist colony. Who said that? Not me, boss. What are you laying there for? Waiting to be fed? No, boss. Ain't no crane working. The Duke ain't showed up yet. What? What? Who? Why, the Duke? Peter Thompson, boss. Oi! The foreman's after you, too. Yeah, well, I can tell him where he gets off this time. There'll be no occasion to put that in your paper. <laughs> Thompson! Come down here, I tell you! What? Come down here a minute! Thompson, will you come down here? Come down here! <laughs> Hi, chap. The foreman's coming up after you. All right, I'm coming down to him. Collect your ticket. What for? Late. Late? Late. Yeah, and with good reason. What? Well, you see, I saw a couple of people trying to kill each other. Decided to stop them. Get out! Well, don't you believe me? Out! Uh, just a minute, Mr. Grant. Grant! Did you say you just saved two lives? Yeah, that's right. What a story. A great personal risk, of course. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> what a story. And you were just going to sack it. What an angle. Heroes who build your London. Eh? Waterloo Bridge engineer saves two lives on the way to work in this fire. Just a minute. Foreman's strange reward for gallantry. Maybe I was hasty, Thompson. Can I have your story, please? Well, yes, if you... Give me a story and get back on the crane. You mean I'm not fired? Should you be wanting it for your article, the name's Grant. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, step into it, son. Well, there's nothing much to it, really. You see, I was uh, looking out of the window on the underground, um, travelling overground. What? That's right. I saw through a window, uh, at a window. Well, which? Well, both, really. I saw a man messing about with a girl. What? Yeah, he was trying to stick a knife into her. Oh, <laughs> a knife, I get you. Yeah, well, I leapt out of the train, climbed up to the room, Found it was a suicide pact, not murder. No. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, how's this? Engineer sees tragedy and leaps from train. No, I didn't leap, no. Well, precipitous climb to avert dual slash throat pack. No, it wasn't that sort of climb at all. Beats off blade thrust with bare fists. No, no, no. It's really very simple. I was going along on the under. Give me Bert Sackville. What? The Chelsea Empire. Yeah. Get a lot of that. No, no, not that. That's tripe, and synthetic tripe at that. There. That poor girl. That stark tragedy for her. Hello, Bert. Oh, Max Preston here. How's the boy? Oh, grand. Say, listen, Bert, I understand you had a bit of trouble with one of your acts last night. Trouble? You've been misinformed. The public only used Bren guns on a so-called comedy act, and I had to ring down the fire curtain. Say, listen, Bert, I got a great stunt for your replacement. You'll be doing me a favor and solving your own troubles. No, no, listen, Maxie, I know your stunts. I've had some. I've suffered. But, Bert, this is a headliner. Oh... Uh... Cast your eye on that. Strike me, the Duke's in the news. Not that. From the very foot of the column, when interviewed, Foreman Grant stated, Grant! Did you see what he stated? Pete's my best man. I'm giving him the rest of the day off. What? <laughs> it's in the paper. It must be true. <laughs> Good old Duke. <laughs> oh, the 
the deuce pulled it off this time, boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, done all of that. He's a celebrity now. No more craning for him. What they give you for your life story? Yeah, I'll have that perfume to washing day. Cut to wash the handsome face of a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Foreman Grant stated that the Duke was to have a fortnight's holiday at Monte Carlo. <laughs> Here, Duke. What's up, Tony? Here, what was your other buddy done with, chum? Guess? A room full of sickening ethyl odor? Nah, nothing like that, Tony. Uh, guns, eh? Nasty mess. Human brains all over the Espedesco, like. No, it was a knife. A knife? What, throat slip from year to year? Ghastly gaping gash. Ooh, the blood. No, I didn't get as far as that, Tony. Oh. Here. Give you a kick. Here's a knife. Cool. Lovely. Here, boys, look at this. Look. There's not any blood on it. And it ain't even sharp. Ah, oh! <laughs> Excuse. It's a fake. <laughs> oh, the Duke's been taken in properly this time. You watch me. <laughs> Duke, there's your knife. Hey! Hey! What's up? Public hero number one. Hit the big on it. Hey, boy, Thompson! Oh, warmest congratulations on your splendid achievement. Flitting. Well, I'm not surprised. Here, you'd better take this with you. Come in, will you? We owe you a very big apology. I came to see Mr. Zoltini. Well, I'm afraid he's not here. Oh, where is he? At the theatre. The theatre? Yes. We've got a job at last, and entirely through you. Well, I don't see what it's got to do with me. Between the pair of you, you played a pretty rotten trick on me. It wasn't my idea. I wonder. If it was ever idea it was, you must have got a pretty good laugh out of it. Just the opposite. It started a first-class row. Oh, did it? I know how bitter you must be feeling about it. Cigarette? No, thanks. Well, nobody likes to be made a fool of. All that rubbish in the papers about saving people's lives. No? But you have saved our lives. If it wasn't for the rubbish in the newspaper, we wouldn't have got the job. We really were down to our last shilling. And this means the chance of a, a new start. It might mean a big comeback. I can't explain exactly what it really does mean. I don't understand that. I'm very glad. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. I'll be forgiven now. I think you should forgive me coming up here the way I do. Oh, no. I feel you ought to have us up for fraud or something. You don't look like a fraud to me. Well, I must be going to the theatre now. You've more rehearsing to do. Would you like your job? Ooh, acting, yes, I mean? yes. Oh, <laughs> no knives this time. Well, this is where we say goodbye, I suppose. Yes, I suppose it is. Seems a pity. I shall see you sometime. When? <laughs> well, any time I'm not actually working. Where? Well, look. We still owe you two pounds. Why don't you come to the theatre tonight and collect them? Fine. All right. You ask for me at the stage door. Really? I might be able to give you a ticket for the show. Yes, I'd like to see the show. Well, I'll see you tonight. Yeah, so long. Bye. Just trying to be gentle. Oh, well, I suppose you want some food. 
No, as a matter of fact, I think I'll go out for a bit. It's still going. Go and enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not going in those clothes. Oh, Lord, no. Anything exciting happened? No. How's the bridge? A bit more of it. Oh, be careful of that geezer. And a clean towel, Pat. Yes. Going to. Hey, Pat, get me some more shaving soap, will you? And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege to show you a trick that comes to us from centuries past. The Chinese ring. The oldest trick in the world. It was shown to be by a Chinese sage who had it from his father. And his father from his, the beginning of time. That's all right. Mutilated sunshade. Floating ball. Maybe uh, yes. this must be prepared. Yes. Sacred cabinet. Chair of death. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my last item, a sensational illusion that I entitled the Bride of the Air. Good artist never forgets his routine. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to present my partner, the greatest little lady in the world, Miss Vivienne. You are happy we are back? Mm -hmm. Yes. No more troubles now, Vivian. Soon we'll be up high in the lights again. Mm. Oh, Vivian, we, we must not quarrel. Ah, eh? quarrels mm. don't worry me, Louis. It's your quarrels with the management. Look, darling, if anything happens tonight to upset you, will you please try not to lose your temper mm. and shout the place down? I quarrel. Will you, Louis? I quarrel. Now, how can you say? If I have to fight and fight those coarse and stupid people who are trying to cheat me. Well, I... well, well. If it isn't old Zorri, how's the old nice try? You know, Viv, you remember Basil and the old Pimlico. Of course. We always said you were the one to make the show go. Oh, yeah, I'm stage manager here now. Ah. Good to see you having a run through. After your long rest, I suppose you've got to send paper the rust off the works a bit, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, I don't think you should manage the stage. You should get a red nose for your round face and join us in the performance. Oh, we always said you were a good comedian. Get on with the rehearsal. Very tiresome of us, but may want the stage tonight. You fool! Can't you learn to take these people yet? You take your place. Come on. Come on, hurry up here. We haven't got much time left. Here, ladies and gentlemen. Here I have a sheet. Just an ordinary sheet. Stand straight. It'll be the same old story. It's taken us 15 months to get on the boards again. Get back a little. We don't want to be shot off in 15 minutes. Don't talk so much. Where would those vulgar managers be without the artists? Yes. Where would the artist be without the vulgar salary? Always afraid of your job. Yes, I am afraid. Oh, shut up, Sway! Oh, not like that. Smoothly, smoothly. You want to know by now, there's only people with money who can afford to be sensitive. An artist can't. It isn't good business. Never mind what's good business and what's bad business. I conduct my business my own way. Your success hasn't been very noticeable so far. Will you be so good as to hold your tongue? That's not so easy. All I know is I don't want to starve to death. Shut up. Are you ready? Oh, get on with it, Louis. I've got to change. Hey, presto! Then go! Oh, you hat. Perhaps that's what you need. You are so conceited. You know everything. Oh, I should behave with this horrible bezel. Oh, I should have told the story this morning about the rehearsal. Should we have this engagement if I had? That wasn't so clever either. That boy found out about the knife. How do you know that? Because he came to see you about it. Oh, he came to the apartment, huh? Yes, but I managed to calm him down. Ah, and you admitted him? Of course I admitted him. Ah, of course you did. The so charming Englishman. And you calmed him down. Yes, I believe that. Oh, Louis, don't be so stupid. Vivian. Well, I said nothing. Then a few days, a silly My dear, they dug up and that, and that old hand's old TV again. Vivian! Hello, Vivian. Hello, Hi. 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 Hi.
Nice to see you. Hello, love. <laughs> By God, if it isn't Vivian. <laughs> Younger than ever, lass. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Come on, Soaps. Clear the arena. Go on. Off you go. Colin, Viv, you're on third. Hey, wait a minute. I third? That's what I said. How dare you do that to me? To Zoltini? Don't come that stuff with me, old man. You were a flop before I was born. I was what? Now you take that back, my friend, right away, or I won't go on on the stage. You will come with me to the manager, instantly. No cheap third rate. I can talk to me. <laughs> Don't feel like If I'm in this position, like that old man of yours, I'll put somebody on it. I'll go to my attorney tomorrow and bring her a lot. Never in my place. Here you are, Viv. Max! <laughs> After all these years. How did you know I was here? Well, I read something about you in the newspapers. Oh, that. Oh, now, don't misunderstand me, Vivian. I haven't come here to say I told you so. I'm sorry. Terribly sorry. Oh, that was just a stupid misunderstanding. Louie and I weren't really doing what you read. We haven't come to that yet. Well, I'm glad. But it had me worried at the time. But uh, things haven't been too good, huh? Look, I've got to get dressed. You sit here and don't you move. That press story did do one thing, though. Oh, yes? Somebody who saw it thought it would be a good stunt to put us on. You don't know who it was, do you? Don't know a thing about it, kid. How is the agency business? Oh, flesh peddling has its moments, but this isn't one of them. The third is quiet. Cabaret's all right. So why don't you try cabaret? Cabaret? Yeah. <laughs> you should hear what Louis thinks about cabaret. Well, I don't particularly care what that heel thinks about anything. Why don't you chuck him out, Vivian? Everybody knows he's finished. You got to say that, Max. Though he's one of the best illusionists in the business. All right, all right. The guy's a great artist. I'm not denying that. Why, he can pull the pyramids out of your vest pocket. But it's his temperament, Vivian. And the managers won't stand for it. I've tried so hard, Max. And why don't you let me help you? Three years ago, I told you I could put you where you belong, on the top. Yes, and I'm three years older now. Yeah, with one foot in the grave. Ah, you make me tired. Yeah. Look at yourself. Why, you don't know your own possibilities. Listen, Vivian, I'm taking a variety bill on an Empire tour. And I'll take you along and give you a good contract. Contract? Right? Yeah. For what? Yeah, well, well, as an artist, of course. Oh, no, no. I'm not that kind of an agent. You told me once where I got off, and I got. I'd like to, Max. They can't walk out on Louis now just when he's got a chance to make good. No, oh, will you never learn, or is there some other reason? Someone younger, perhaps, with not so much grey hair around the temples? Mrs. Altini. Thank you. Who? Mrs. Altini. Ah, uh, Miss Vivian, number seven. Yes, I know, Max, but you must go now. Louis will be here in the minute. Thanks for the warning. Listen, Vivian, don't make up your mind just like that. Think it over. I'm giving you a farewell supper party at my flat in Embankment Court tonight. The whole gang will be there. I thought maybe you'd like to... Oh, I'd love come to, along Max. Through. But Louie won't let me out of his sight. Come on, Vivian. Where's that old spirit? Find some way to dodge him. No, Max. Well, here's to the comeback. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye, Max. Excuse me, please, where's number seven? Number seven? Oh, yes. Right in there. Thanks. It's outrageous. It's an insult. Never before have I appeared before the intermission. No, no, I'm lucky to appear anywhere. I, lucky? You are lucky! Made foot! If Queen Anne's dead, you're an Egyptian mummy. Now, don't make me lose my temper. Go on third, I say you do. And on third, you go or not at all. Now, that's no mention. Hiya, Zaltini. When the show started, you better hurry or you'll miss the first turn. Do you like it? Yeah, it's a treat. Well, I'll, I'll get you your ticket. Don't forget to give me a hand when I come on. Oh, yes, I was going to do that. Here you are. Thanks. You better go around the front now. Yeah. Would you like to come round after the act and have a drink with us? 
May I? Of course. Oh, thanks. Max Preston was here, eh? Say, what is this? What are you doing here? Louis. First you come to my house in the morning with your stupid interference. And then again, when I'm not there. And now you have the impudence to come to my wife's dressing room. What does it mean? I asked him to come. Well, get out of here. Louis, you forget you owe him two pounds. Oh. Well, here. Here's your two pounds. Now take yourself away. I won't let anybody of your kind hang around my wife. What do you mean by that? Oh, please don't take any notice of him. He's always like this before the show. Please go. All right, I'll go. And he picks up my money. Hey, thanks for your kind accommodation. Is there perhaps some interest? We run off to your act. Ah, a little rendezvous, eh? I should worry about Max Preston with some younger attraction around. Tonight, we're going to give you some international corn right off the cob. A little review for two called Hits and Misses. Now, in this scene, a girl walking along drops her handkerchief. And then, hey, Toot, you drop something. What? I say, here's your handkerchief. Oh, that's all right. I'm finished with it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come here. Come here. Where are you going? Who wants to know? I do. And who are you? Why, everybody knows me around here. Say, I'm as familiar as a lamppost. Oh, I see. <laughs> the dogs know you. The do <laughs> hey, come here. Come here. Our life has been ruined by your cruel, horrible love affairs. Delight, your own poisoned imagination. Saltinius, please. You ruined my art. It is you who ruined my career. I've done everything I can to save you from your own stupidity. Men have three ages. Three ages? Yes. At 20, they're winning. At 40, they're losing. At 60, they've lost. Lost what? Uh, who cares at that? <laughs> you married me only for what I could do for you. And ever since that time, you stabbed me in my back with you deceived, you disloyal, you're Max Preston. Oh, stop it, stop it, will you? I'm mad. I'm mad, am I? Please, on my knees, I ask you, will you marry me? Get up. Will you marry get me, Get up. You look suspicious. Will you? <laughs> I don't want to get married. But I'll make you... I don't know you will very well. Will you listen well. to me, I got enough trouble. Will you listen to I me, I don't please. need a husband. We'll be... My sister's got one. But, but... <laughs> ah, but if you marry me, dear, if you marry me, I won't do as other men do. Why? What's the matter with you? <laughs> no. no, no, no. I mean, I'll love you. I'll love you. I'll love you. I'll love oh, you. Oh, he's a broken record. I'll love you. <laughs> My love, when I look at you, I think how wonderful Let's you look. are. I'm getting you are rubbed wonderful. down. <laughs> and you're beautiful. Your lips, your hair, your eyes are beautiful. The eyes are up here. <laughs> Why, well, listen, I'd go through fire or water for you, dear. Well, I would. Make I, it fire. I'd, I'd rather have you hot than all wet. No. <laughs> Oh, come on, be serious, will you, you know, please? You know, he's will been you... doing this for years. Will you listen And to he me? expects me to get a thrill out of will it. Will you listen? <laughs> I, you can love. Will you listen to How me? How would you like to get this twice a night, my ass? <laughs> Boy, not bad out there. Hello, honey. I understand. If that young fool comes again, let him look out for himself. Oh, you're all talking. You haven't the nerve to hit anyone, and you know it. Hmm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what can Zoltini say to such wonderful reception? He can only thank you from here. Many person may have read this morning what was to be Zoltini's fortune. But fate was much otherwise. Let us face truth. Yes, circumstances and misunderstanding have kept Zoltini from your entertainment. But tonight he is back with you again. And from now on, he hopes always to be at your service. Thank you. I 
present my partner, the greatest little lady in the world, Miss Vivian. gentlemen, my last and greatest item. With the assistance of Miss Vivian, may I present to you my sensational illusion, which I have entitled The Bride of the Air. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, here I have a sheet, just an ordinary sheet. Shall I, uh... Oh, drive on, anywhere. I've done a terrible thing. Well, don't you start blaming yourself? I can see what you had to put up with. Yes, but that... you don't understand. To walk out on your partner in the middle of the act. They don't forgive that in our business. That probably ruined Louis for good. Well, don't take it like that. He deserved it and more. Come on. Give us a smile. Come on, come on. That's perfect. You've done a nice thing. Vivian, where is she? Walked out on you, I should think, and no wonder. Walked out? Get out of my theater. We'll send your props after you. Walked out? And I'll tell them express what I think of his precious stunts. Express. Oh, it's no use. 
so I must go back. Well, you can't do that, not after what you've done. It's impossible. Well, what can I do? Oh, I'll help you. You? Yes, of course. But how? Well, I can't think in here. Let's get out of here. Hey. I must plan something. Where can we go? Got an idea. Come on. Better get along quietly, Mr. Zoltini. I'll see to everything. Did you see her go, my partner? Yes, sir. Miss Vivian's gone. Everything's all right. Mm. Did Mr. Preston? No, sir. Who will? Well, a young fella. He was. I've heard where. No, sir, but they took old Bert's taxi. He'll be back presently to pick up a regular down at the cafe, round the corner there. Thank you, my friend. That's where we're going. I work up there. Can we really get up there? Well, it's a bit of a climb. Let's go. Tell him well all. Tell him, Cup. Yeah, don't go there. It's filthy. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? What's the matter? You here. <laughs> Yeah, don't touch that. It's greasy. Not like the rich, you know. Well, I don't know what I was thinking of to bring you up here. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I suppose it is makeup. I bet you don't need it. Your hair, what's it smell of? Then you had a bit. Now the other way. I shouldn't be able to work in this crane again. I should always be thinking of you and me. <coughs> well, chase me around the waterworks. Good evening, Bill. Go home to bed. Oh, I've seen some goings on in my time and seen some funny places used for them. Particularly when I was in France. But stop teeth with Portland cement. I never let him see the slap and tickle in a crane cabin. Buzz off, buzz off. Can't you see I'm busy? What well, the watchman can't allow this, Thompson. What do the people say? What do the company say? What do the foreman say? The foreman! Your bell, Bill. Keep your mouth shut. Ah, seal lips, that's me. But uh, <clears throat> step on it. My mate will be back soon and he's got an honorable sense of duty. <laughs> that's on. It must be grand working up here in the open. Yeah, it's a good life sometimes, especially when you get a fine day. And the men you work with? They're the salt of the earth. You can rely on them. You know, Vivian, you can trust me to stand by you as long as you want me, as long as you need my help. You're awfully nice. So nice that I can't believe there isn't someone else, someone else in your life already. Am I? No. Switchboard. Hampstead, 
Just one minute, please. Hampstead 2867. Sir Edward Harbin has complained to me that you failed to wake him in time to catch the early plane to the continent this morning, as a result of which certain important financial negotiations have been jeopardized. I regret it, but in the circumstances, I have no alternative but to dispense with your services. In other words, I'm sacked. Sir Edward Harbin has complained that you failed to wash his face and brush his teeth this morning, as a result of which he's been slung out on his neck. I regret, but in the circumstances... Any of all. Switchboard. Hello. a cup of coffee? I don't mind if I do, Governor. I expect she's very sweet. I must go. But Vivian, we haven't settled anything. Or what's going to happen to you? I'm all right. I've got everything clear in my mind now. I know somewhere I can go. And thanks for bringing me here. You're not going back to Zoltini? No, don't worry. You'd better take me down to Earth now. I've seen a little of your life. Now you shall see some more of mine. This is Toby Morla. Part of the Echo, huh? And this is Mr. Uh... Oh, hello. How did you get in here? I forgot. This is Mr. Peter Thompson. Yes, we have met. Oh, Max, be nice to him. Be nice to him, huh? Okay. Glad to have you with us, Mr. Thompson. Pleased to meet you. Are you in the profession? Oh, me? No. Uh, no I drive a crane. Is that you what? I drive a crane. Sounds to me like he says he drives a crane. He does. What am I going to do with a crane driver? Look here, Max, give him a drink. I want to talk to you. Okay. Oh, Andrea, can you drive a crane? No, but I sling a mean steam shovel. Well, this is Mr. Thompson, who can drive a crane. Oh, this is Miss Lanine. She's very anxious to learn all about your fascinating occupation. And uh, what do you call your crane, Mr. Thompson? Well, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Got this. Who's your mechanical boyfriend? He's not a boyfriend. He's just a friend. He's helped me get away from Malloy. Nice boy. Something to do with Saltini? Yes. Okay. Let's go where we can be quiet. You uh, haven't any more parlor tricks, have you? 
Well, I used to be able to lie down flat on the floor, get up with a glass of beer on my head. I could try that if you like. Oh, no, I don't think we have any beer. Well, champagne, then. <laughs> that would have been much too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I say, where's Vivian? Oh, I don't know, but you don't want very bad, Vivian. She's all right. You know, Andrea, you're a beautiful girl, and I'm an expert. Expert? <laughs> you're an experience. <laughs> Your hotel on the phone, waking me up at this hour. See, it doesn't occur again or find another flat. Piece of nonsense. Look, Pat, you've got to come back here at once. Well, I don't know what it is, but there's a terrible rumpus. Well, I'll take a taxi and make the old so-and-so pay for it. You know, I like this sort of life. I can see that. <laughs> you know, you ought to go on the stage. Well, I don't see why not. I can... Juggle, drive crazy. That's right, sing. Sing? Yeah. Well, come on. You want me to sing? Of course. You asked for it. Hold that. No, I better get with you. So, you see, you've got nothing to worry about. I should have listened to you long ago. Yeah, here, yeah, Vivian. There's no cause for that. Oh. What's the matter? I've lost my bag. Oh, don't worry about that. To the best of my knowledge, the folks here are above board. In that way. You'll leave it in the taxi? Let's all sing like the baby sing. Tweet, 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 tweet. Let's all sing like the baby sing. Tweet, 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 tweet. I remember. I left it in the crane cabin. So what is this harping on cranes? I'll get Peter. Let's all sing like the baby sing. Oh, for goodness sakes, what's baby up to now? Hello. I've left my bag in the crane cabin and I must have it. What, now? Of course, it's got one little I possess in it. Oh, well, I'll say I'm singing now. I'll fetch it tomorrow. It'll be all right. It then. won't be all right. Not if the foreman finds out. Oh, foreman. Yes, you're right. I'll go. <laughs> well, as a singer, he makes a good crane driver. <laughs> Don't be a mug. You ain't got a chance in there. Yeah, help it, mate. You couldn't help it. You'll be drowned. Might have been you.
the dotted line. Everything's all right now. Max has given me a lovely contract and I'm going on tour. We sail tomorrow. What's the matter? Something. What? I've killed him. Please, control yourself. Get out of here. I'll talk to you. Shh. Shabana, darling. Sorry to get you up so early. Oh, well, sir, it was a bit... Uh, Where's the girl? Uh, oh, miss. This is Sir Edward Harbin. Sir Edward Harbin. Are you the girl who didn't wake me up this morning? Yes, sir. Through you, I missed my plane to the continent. I'm very sorry, sir. You lost me a most important appointment. Well, sir, I've been sacked. Yes, sir, at once, without a... Will you kindly hold your tongue? You lost me my appointment, but you saved my life. I hear the Moscow plane crashed. And it's thanks to you that I'm still alive, my dear. Oh, I'm so glad. You'll take her back, of course. Oh, of course, sir. A uh, very good type of girl here, Sir Edward. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Edward. My dear child, I owe you everything. Now, is there any way at all I can help you? Yes. As a matter of fact, there is. Don't you see? I must go to him. Go where to him? Home. Home? They'll be bringing him. Did he mean so much to you, after all? I really loved him. <laughs> I understand how you feel about it. You can't be years with a man and get him out of your system. Not in five minutes, you can't. No matter what he was. So if that's the way you feel about it, perhaps you'd better go. Thank you, Max. You've been awfully kind.
fight him. Fight? You? What about? Does it matter? I suppose the police know. If they don't, they will. You didn't report to them. What are you going to do? Please. You've got to give yourself up. I don't know what that means. face a treat, but he won't tell the cops nothing about that. Oh, Peter. Who was he? Well, that uh, well, it's beginning to long. Just popped in to put your mind at rest, like. Uh, well, not until you've had some food. Well, I do feel a bit peckish. Yeah, come on. <laughs> reason for bad. My reason is fear, Vivian. Always fear that I shall lose you. And everything goes so dark. They told me you were dead. Suddenly I realized everything we'd been to each other. I couldn't bear it. I love you. Without me, had you thought what you would do? Oh, let's not think about it. Nothing. <laughs> let's let's have some coffee, huh? I'll get it for you. Oh no, 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 my dear. You are too tired. So tiny shall fix it for you. By magic. Yeah. Presto. Well, so long. Thanks for the eats. So long, Bill. Goodbye, not starvation. Good. Well, I must be getting along, too. Oh, Pete. Hmm? Wait for me. I'm coming with you today. Suits me. Happy, Louis? I have everything I need in this world. Except for one thing. What's that? Money to buy cigarettes with. <laughs> you can have that too. You'll find sixpence in my bag on the dresser. Oh, little magician. But only on one condition. What? That I have half the cigarettes. Oh. I should have known there was some catch. Look, look, we're just coming to the place where it all started. to lose me. You can't bear when I'm dead. Lies. Money and, and even a steamship ticket. No, I didn't know. And all those horrible lies that you love me. No, I... Lies! Tell me. Lies! Lies! One too many! Yeah! Yeah. 